Hey everybody, welcome to another OfficePools.com tutorial. And in this video, I am going to show you how to set up a hockey box pool. Now before we get to that, make sure that you have already registered. So click on the register button on the top right corner there. <clears throat> and here is where you put in all your beautiful information. Um, and then you click on register and then you'll get a confirmation email telling you to sign in. And uh, now we're all ready to go. We can create a hockey pool. So let's create one and click on that button. And voila, you have a variety of pools to choose from. And it says playoffs, but we do have these pools available for the regular season. And like I said, we're gonna be putting all our energy and focus on a box pool. And you're gonna see here, $20, $20. Now, FYI, that's $20, that's a one-time fee to be paid by the administrator. So it's not $20 per person, it's $20 for the administrator to pay and he or she can have as many poolies or participants uh, as you want in a pool. So um, the beauty of a box pool, I find, is that if you're dealing with a lot of people, and they say you're doing a fundraiser, which is I highly recommend, uh, or a sponsored event, you're just dealing with a large amount of people with a variety of you know knowledge level of hockey, box pools are really easy to use. Um, and I'll show you why here in a second. So this is step one, step one of five different steps that I'm gonna walk you through. And step one is box pool settings. So we wanna pick a cool pool name and we can only use letters and numbers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go test pool 25 and you'll find out if that name is available it is perfect now just fyi you want to pick your name uh wisely because once you've created a pool name you can't go back and change it um however once i've put you through all five of these steps of our setup wizard you can go back and change your pool title which is different than the pool name. You can create a pool title, which allows you to use spaces and other characters, okay? Guest access password, make it all lowercase if you can. Something easy for people to remember. Uh, you want to uh, provide your poolies with the pool name, as well as the guest access password so that they can log in with guest access. Entry cutoff. Now entry cutoff is what date you want as a deadline for teams to get their pools entered. So it auto populates to the beginning of the playoffs or the beginning of the regular season. For this video, I have to choose a different date. I'm just gonna pick August 1st so I can show you how to set this pool up. And here you have templates. Now this is where we start making the magic happen. These are the different boxes that are available, different templates that you can have that have different uh, positions. So in template one here, you have forward, defenseman, and goalies. Template two, you have forward, defenseman, and NHL teams. And in template three, you have forward and defenseman. If you think you know what you're doing, you wanna get super creative, you can also customize and create your own. Um, now we spend a lot of time and energy putting together templates. Um, if you see this number here, this is the version of a template that we've created. You find that we are constantly updating these uh, boxes, especially as we get closer to the playoffs, um, as we're guesstimating a lot of times what players will be in the playoffs. I and mean, with a lot of parity in the NHL right now, we're always kind of uh, slightly in changing or updating the boxes. So uh, we always have the most updated version available for you. So what does a box pool look like? Let's take a look, let's preview. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's a lot of boxes. Go figure. And in each box, you have NHL players. And all these players are grouped based on the stats and points uh, that they received uh, from the previous season. So all um, participants have to do, and this is what I talked about, the beauty and, and how simple a box pool is, uh, especially if you're dealing with a large amount of people. All people have to do is pick one player per box. <clears throat> so unfortunately... Uh, you have to pick uh, Sidney Crosby over Alex Ovechkin or, you know, whatever, Evgeny Malkin. And you have Eastern Conference forwards as well as uh, you've got some defensemen and goalies to choose from because that's the template we chose. And same thing with the Western Conference. 
So yeah, that's the basics. That's what a box pool looks like. And those the, you know, that's the templates you have to choose from. So once you've kind of got this step one all, uh, you know, uh, set up, uh, there are advanced things you can do as well. But I'd recommend just keeping it simple and uh, move on to how you want your pool to be scored. So hit save and continue and I will walk you through step two, scoring. All right, welcome to step two, scoring. This is how you set up uh, the scoring system for your box pool. And right now everything's kind of set to standard uh, where you get one point for a goal, one point for assist, same thing with defensemen. With goalies, it's one point for a win, one point for a shutout. Now you can have a little bit of fun with this and when you hit expand, boom, you can customize this to however you want. You can have maybe two points for a goal, or you can have uh, bonus points for a power play goal, or a game winning goal, or, you know, hat tricks. Whatever you want. You name it, we got it. And the same thing goes with, with goalies. Uh, maybe you want 25 points or 50 points if a goalie scores a goal, because it doesn't happen very often. Um, so, as you can see, you can set bonus points however you want. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is something called the dropped lowest rule. This comes in handy if poolies have players who are injured on their roster. Maybe there's some players that are underperforming. Um, basically, this feature can reduce the impact of those types of players. And it kind of helps narrow the point spread, adds a little bit of parity to the standings. Um, so... With the drop lowest, you can decide you want the drop lowest of maybe just the the one player or two players on each team. Um, you can you can set that to how you want it and uh, customize and edit to whatever meets your needs. Another thing to think about is a tiebreaker. Uh, I, f I find with box pools that there's a lot of ties. So if you click on this. Use most goals as a tiebreaker. I think that's, you know, fairly uh, self-explanatory. Um, you know, the team with the higher number of goals will be ranked higher in the standings. Um, another thing about scoring is you can kind of customize scoring uh, by position as well. Um, say in your box pool, you want to have a box of, you know, goons, guys who, you know, get a lot of penalty minutes and you want to have set points for enforcer type players. This is where you can do that here. Same thing with rookies. You can expand and, and make uh, a separate category or box for rookies and have customized scoring for them. Um, so I won't get too much into that, but when we go to the next step, uh, which is the template editor, you can um, edit boxes and uh, apply these custom scoring um, categories uh, to those boxes if you want to, but it's something to think about. All right, so when you have all that done, we're going to move on to step three, which is the roster, the template editor. So just hit save and we'll move on to step three. All right, welcome to step three of our box pool creation and it's the template editor this is where all the magic happens this is where you can get super creative and uh, you know it's also fairly uh, easy to use self-explanatory uh, you can change the name of each box you can edit the players that are in each box um, this is where you can implement uh, your specialized scoring if you remember we had um, you could customize forwards, defensemen, goalies. We even had the option of um, customized scoring for rookies, enforcers. If we had done that, you would see them on this drop-down menu as well. And uh, like I said, you can change the box name. Right now we have Eastern Conference forwards, and voila, there are our Eastern Conference forwards. And uh, say we had customized points for forwards, like an extra point for a power play goal, a hat trick, whatnot. This is where you want to select that to make sure that these guys get the points that they deserve. Now, we had it set actually at uh, one selection per box for your poolies, and you could change it to two. You could change it to, to whatever you want. One or two is usually pretty good. Now, say you're looking at this box and you're like, oh, you know, yeah, these guys all had, you know, good seasons. They probably all deserve to be in this, uh, in this, 
in this box here. Uh, maybe you just don't like Brad Marchand. You say, no, forget him. <laughs> you can delete him. You can add somebody else at add choice here. Maybe instead of Brad Marchand, you go with Matthew Kachuk. Good selection. And there, there you go. So like I said, you can just edit and add guys you, that you want. Basically make the box your own, however you want to do it. This is this is where it all happens. Now I was talking about, you know, specialized scoring and how you had it set up. Right now we have it on forwards. And in this box pool, we had defense and goalies. So we can set our customized scoring to defense if we had specialty points for defensemen. Same thing with goalies, we could set it to goalies or default, however, however we had our scoring set up. So like I said, pretty easy to figure this out. Um, you know, it's Eastern Conference and then the Western Conference is down here. Uh, if you like, you know, everything, if everything looks good to you, save your box. And uh, you can move on to the next step. Now, a couple things here. You can uh, preview how the box looks. Voila, so pretty to look at. This is how your box looks. This is how it's going to look online. Some of you may be old school and you want to download the PDF box and uh, maybe print it out. Use paper. Have everyone, you know, use a pen and select their you know make their selections that way I you know as administrator you really just don't want to do a lot of work <laughs> so I recommend keeping everything online and, uh, and that way you don't have to manually put in everybody's uh, pool team so but I'm just saying the option is there if you want a PDF and you want to print it off if everything looks good to you like I said save and then we will continue and we'll go on to step four where you can now set up trading, making trades for your box pool. All right, let's talk about uh, box pool trades. So we're here at step four, box pool trade settings. Now, some box pools allow trades and this is entirely up to you though. Again, it comes down to simplicity and how much work you wanna do as an administrator. Um, a box trade can come in handy if a player is injured or underperforming, like say Sidney Crosby hurts his knee, he's out for a few months, and your poolie wants to trade Crosby for another player within Crosby's box, like say an Alex Ovechkin. So by allowing box pool trades, you're allowing your poolies to trade uh, players within their same box. So there's different ways you can go about this. You can be the all controlling one. You can approve all trades as administrator. They all have to go through you. Or you can set it up where it happens automatically. So you click on this drop down menu here and you can have trades that are approved on a daily, weekly, monthly, season, custom, however you want it, basis. Uh, say we want to have trades automatically done uh, per month. And here below you have a transaction count. That's how many trades you are allowing to happen within a month. So we can have it as one, two, three, four, whatever you want. So right now we have it set where pulleys are allowed one uh, trade or transaction per month. And again, it's entirely up to you and how you wanna do it. If you wanna have all control, again, all trades will go through you with this option. Um, so another little thing to keep in mind is show pending trades and trade history. Right now it's off. So what, what this means is that pending trades won't show up in trade history. Sometimes um, you want to keep that secret. You don't want, a poolie doesn't want their opponents to know about maybe a trade or two that they're making. Um, so if you have this off, that will be secret until the, the trade has been officially approved. Now if you don't care, and then you can turn it on and even pending trades then will show up in trade history and so everybody knows what everybody's doing. So it's entirely up to you. So that's the basics of box pool trades. Uh, trades are a little more in depth than some of the other pools uh, that we provide, um, but that's the basics of, of sort of how it works with box pools. So when we're done, we're gonna hit save and continue and we're gonna move on to step five, messaging. All right, welcome to the final step of setting up your pool. It's uh, the message center. 
And this is pretty easy. You can enable trash talk between poolies. Keep it clean. <laughs> you can allow private messaging between poolies. Or if you're the administrator, you can receive emails, whether maybe someone's already submitted their team online, um, as well as maybe proposed trades. Up to you. You can click those on or off. Hit save when you're all done that. And now we have to move on to inviting your friends, your family, your coworkers, your enemies. We want to invite them to participate. So here you have a shareable invite link right here that you can use. And you can send that off via email, text message, social media. Really easy to use. Uh, highly recommend using the shareable link. Uh, we do have this system here where you can put in uh, the email address and we can send them a pretty generic uh, message. Um, I don't know, most people like to use the invite link. I recommend it. And uh, when you're done that, uh, go ahead and pay for the pool. Now, right now you're gonna be on a free trial. When that's over, you're gonna wanna pay your one-time fee of $20, as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial. Uh, put in all your information, uh, pay your $21. Uh, you can pay with PayPal. If you have a promo code, just put it in over here. And another thing is if you want, uh, if you have any questions or you're having troubles, you can click on the question mark, which will take you to our support center or knowledge base. And you can find all the answers you need right over here. If you can't find an answer, you can email us at help at officepools.com and uh, somebody will be able to answer your query. So there you go. Thank you uh, for watching this tutorial of how to set up a box pool. Go to our YouTube page. Uh, we have other video tutorials as well that should be able to help you. And uh, thank you for choosing Office Pools for your fantasy hockey. Game.